grew up with a queenly frame and reasonably good looks. In my 20s, I'd learned how to keep fit, maintain my figure and look good as I grew older. But it became harder to do as I hit the late 30s. There were times I didn't like myself. Also overcome my hesitation and looked for career advice, looked for mentorship, which has helped me feel secure about my future work goals, hearing the experiences of those that have gone ahead. But I've learned, first of all, self-compassion. Most importantly, I learned to give myself grace. So the lesson is that perimenopause doesn't just define me. Hi everyone, this might be a longer video than usual, but I wanted to chat about my own experience with perimenopause and overcoming the challenges I experienced during this phase of life. Despite being a medical doctor, I wasn't ready for perimenopause. I didn't plan for it or consider until literally while it was happening, how it could affect me personally and professionally. As some of you might know, I lost my mom to breast cancer. We didn't really have that much time to discuss menopause related issues. But as I've come along my own menopause journey, I realized that a lot of the things I was experiencing back then had to do with natural hormone changes as I entered perimenopause. Many of these things my doctor could not really have forewarned me about. And I say this because menopause symptoms or perimenopause can affect women differently. And your doctor would need to check that any of those symptoms that you're presenting with are not as a result of other medical conditions before saying that they're down to perimenopause. So I've grouped these challenges, my experiences, into personal and work. However, it is not all doom and gloom because somehow as I've blundered through the whole thing, I've picked up some tips that have helped me get through and in fact still help me get through them. So I hope you'll stick with me throughout this video up to the second stage and the end of the video where I share some of them. I'd also like to hear what you guys think. Have you experienced challenges like mine? How did you deal with them? Let's begin. Menopause is when a woman comes to the end of her childbearing years. Usually we mark it after you have not experienced a menstrual flow for 12 consecutive months. It's a single point in time. Anything afterwards is post-menopause, while the period before you get to that menopause state is what we refer to as perimenopause. It can start in your early 40s, but in some women, it could even start in the very late 30s. It can go on for about four to seven years, in some cases, even up to 10 years of perimenopause. So now that we have those definitions down, let's get into the meat of the video. Forgetfulness, not being able to multitask as before. I found it difficult to multitask and keep track of my busy schedule effortlessly the way I used to do before. This led to a lot of frustration at work and tasks that piled up or just slipped through the cracks. I experienced poor focus, difficulty concentrating, and then falling behind on work. Before all this, trying to manage a large amount of information was a skill that I was actually quite fond of, but it gradually started getting a little bit more complicated. This led to a lot of performance anxiety, and of course, imposter syndrome rose its very ugly head. Next is indecision and being uncertain with worries about the future. I found myself second-guessing my decisions. I thought it was because I just started a new role that perhaps I wasn't suited for and, you know, I had a learning curve to go through. A lot of indecision and self-doubt just increased my overall anxiety and contributed to that feeling of being overwhelmed. There were confidence issues and doubt in my competence. This was probably my most significant area of professional worry. As a doctor, I'm naturally expected to lead the team in making clinical decisions, have the answers, and the buck stops with me. But then I found myself asking if I had enough knowledge. Was I good enough for the job that I had been doing? I found myself afraid of being thought incapable despite the years of experience in the same job. In addition, and perhaps I've been a little bit lucky, but the multicultural work environment can be a little less friendly or toxic to a black professional woman who makes mistakes. There was also career stagnation and difficulty advancing. This worked two ways. Not only did I feel that I was being overlooked thanks to my maturity, but trying to apply for new roles, especially in leadership, was scary. Many times I was tired just thinking about it and didn't have the motivation. There were feelings of frustration and helplessness. So looking at the personal, the first was guilt and self-blame also a regret over roads not taken. The last 10 years have been quite reflective in a good and bad way. Instead of celebrating the positive steps I'd chosen, I found myself regretting and even feeling guilty of choices that I made or those that I didn't make. 
<laughs> it took a while to accept the natural pattern of things and then make them part of my life journey instead of agonizing over what I thought I've lost. Next is a loss of control and difficulty managing tasks and appetite. Challenges with meeting goals wasn't just limited to my professional life. There are many times that I felt personally I wasn't in control. Simple things like just developing and sticking to a meal plan. Worrying about my daughter's school and social calendar and activity because it just felt too much to keep track of. Even adding so much weight at a point that I didn't recognize myself. Next, sleep disturbances and how they impact overall well-being. If you know me a little bit, I don't joke with sleep. And that position is from hard-worn experience. Like many in the medical field, I've had my share of sleep disruptions, both as a doctor in training and in practice. But when the mind should be at rest, sleep doesn't come. And of course, that will spiral into heavy tiredness, mood swings, just being a nasty person to be around. There are body image issues and grappling with physical changes that seem to be coming, popping out of nowhere. I grew up with a queenly frame and reasonably good looks. In my 20s, I'd learned how to keep fit, maintain my figure and look good as I grew older. But it became harder to do as I hit the late 30s. Even without the pressure of society to deal with, of course, there are work-related issues, personal issues to deal with that can affect the mind and willingness or motivation to stay fit and healthy. Sometimes, even though I feel bad saying it, there were times when I didn't bother about hair, skin, nails. Oh, the frustration. <laughs> Next, emotional overload and increased sensitivity. There were times I didn't like myself. I was hard on myself, very critical. It's good to check yourself, but mine could have been positive and more productive. It led me to emotional outbursts, a vulnerability that I tried desperately to hide and feeling overwhelmed. These are some of the challenges I experienced and I would love to know in the comments section if any, any of these resonates with you, if any of you have also experienced these. I was trying to beat out the fires one by one, not really connecting the dots because of course there are so many other things going on, work pressure, pressure at home and so on. When I eventually figured it out, it became easier. <laughs> so there are many ways to manage and overcome these feelings or these experiences from educating myself, asking questions to lifestyle changes and looking at self-care in a different way altogether. All of these can make the challenges manageable. As I've navigated through perimenopause, I found that certain lifestyle adjustments, increased awareness and specific treatments have helped me manage the challenges that it brings. So I'd love to share what has worked for me both personally and professionally to hopefully support and inspire others who may be going through the same thing during their transition. When it comes to forgetfulness and not being able to multitask as before, I got into the habit of using organizational tools like apps and planners to stay on top of my tasks. I learned how to break things down into small manageable steps and accept each small win as a tick towards the final destination. I make a point of taking regular breaks during my day. Sometimes just stepping away from work when it's possible gives me the mental clarity I need to reset. To deal with poor focus and difficulty concentrating, falling behind, I learned mindfulness techniques like short meditation sessions during my lunch break, first thing in the morning, or listening to calming conversations while driving to work. They've made a massive difference in helping me to concentrate. I found that regular exercise really does help to keep the brain sharp and it improves my ability to stay at work. It doesn't have to be a lengthy session, even a 10 15 20 minute session a few times a week is enough and what about dealing with indecision uncertainties and worries about the future this is one of those that i had to learn and change my thinking around i've also overcome my hesitation and looked for career advice looked for mentorship which has helped me feel secure about my future work goals hearing the experiences of those that have gone ahead and knowing that i'm not alone in what I'm going through. Having a professional supportive network has been invaluable in negotiating those tough decisions. What about those confidence issues and doubting my own competence? Like I said, I was doubting my abilities at some time. I learned to push back against those thoughts by investing in myself. I looked for workshops and online courses that targeted those areas that I wasn't confident around. Within my inner network, I keep positive, supportive people around me and they remind me that I'm still capable despite those internal doubts. With the issue of career stagnation, difficulty advancing, instead of 
instead of operating long term, I decided to set short term achievable career goals. And that's actually kept me motivated and moving forward, even on days where I feel exhausted or overwhelmed. And ladies, listen, I've learned about advocating for myself at work, whether it's asking for flexibility or pursuing opportunities that I would probably not have considered before. Over to the personal challenges and how to address that, because the first one is guilt and self-blame or the regrets over the roads not taken. Coming into perimenopause has really made me reflective, but I've learned first of all, self-compassion. I realized that I couldn't let myself continue to be my worst and biggest critic. So I started writing down, journaling how I felt just to process these emotions. And yes, I do have regrets, but I've been able to reframe them as valuable lessons. Instead of sitting down worrying about what I didn't do, I focus on what is possible going forward and I remember to celebrate what I've achieved. Of course, there's loss of control and the difficulty managing tasks and appetite. I can't say enough about planning tools. They're so useful. They've helped me regain control, especially for daily tasks, including planning meals. I started accepting help and delegating tasks because I realized I wasn't going to win an award for doing everything. How did I manage the sleep disturbances? Because if you recall, that was a big problem for me. I changed my bedtime routine. It's very calming. That in itself worked wonders. So make sure that the room is not filled with things that can be very interrupting or distracting. As much as I can, I know it's not easy. I avoid my screens and smart devices and caffeine very close to bedtime. I, a couple of times I've used a natural supplement like magnesium, which has helped. I've also used hormone replacement therapy, which made a difference in quite a lot of the symptoms I experienced, especially helping me to get back into a better sleep routine. And the body image issues, grappling with all those physical changes. That aspect has not been easy for me. I remind myself to be kind to myself about my body image and focus on self-care. I've incorporated regular exercise. Um, I find and wear clothes that make me feel confident and just practice being positive about myself mentally and physically. Connecting with other women here on YouTube and off YouTube, going through similar changes also reminds me that I'm not alone. What about the increased sensitivity from emotional overload? For those times when my emotions were really overwhelming, I had to learn techniques for distressing with meditation, relaxation therapy, deep breathing. I looked at therapy and support groups that would help me deal with heightened emotions. Most importantly, I learned to give myself grace during the times of vulnerability and reaching out to family or friends who support me while it's a rough time. Through all of this is looking for information, education and awareness that have just helped me manage these situations. Because the more I learned about what was going through and why it was happening, the more empowered, the more relieved I felt and able to manage things. I read what I can. Even as a medical practitioner, I'm always looking for new information about how menopause affects us. Attending workshops, courses, even online forums where you have healthy conversations with women going through the same thing. I don't shy away from having a conversation with my doctor. I talked about HRT options. I talked about whether um, I talked about which options were safer, micronized progesterone, for example, um, using transdermal options. I had these conversations because I had in mind my own family history and my own health conditions. I've left it to last, but it's really so important as well. Having a strong support system of family and friends that one can rely on has been one of my most powerful tools. So whether it's connecting with a friend or family or even on the online forums, it's just good to know that I'm not alone and it's made a difference. So the lesson is that perimenopause doesn't just define me. It's just one phase of life that we go through. With the right tools, awareness, support, I know I can thrive. And so will every woman going through it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.